Welcome to the ITU studio in Geneva, where we're here for the Future Networked Car Symposium, uh, which is happening this year at ITU because the uh, Geneva Motor Show, where it was originally going to be held, uh, has been cancelled. Uh, but I'm here with Roger Lancter, who is a Director of uh, Connected Mobility and Global Automotive Practice for Strategy Analytics. Uh, uh, Roger, welcome to the studio. Thank you very much. Now, I'd like to start off by asking you a little bit about uh, intelligent transport and I wanted to ask you what is the biggest topic of conversation in intelligent transport at the moment? I think one of the biggest challenges remains getting the ITS industry sort of connected up with the automotive industry. These industries don't uh, communicate very well together. Uh, they often don't even participate in one another's events. Uh, and another <coughs> participant that tends to be missing at ITS events uh, is the technology industry, so the Silicon Valley crowd and the like. So uh, trying to join up those three points of the compass, maybe, <laughs> uh, is the big challenge facing that industry, I think. Now looking uh, into the future of, of mobility, I wanted to ask you, what are your predictions for the future of mobility? How are regulators thinking about it? How are industry players thinking about it? And what should we expect as consumers? So the entire industry is moving towards, trying to get towards a more of a European kind of a delivery mechanism where you know, you would have one means of payment, uh, maybe it's just an app or, or maybe a card or something that encompasses all transportation options. And so th that's the big headline uh, activity that's underway and it involves payments, it involves infrastructure, et cetera. Uh, where there is some confusion is what is the role of cars? And that's my world. And just coming from uh, another conference recently, there was a lot of talk of, you know, we're not gonna have cars, we're not gonna have car parks. And uh, you know, th people start talking about doing away with all these things. You know, you get the vision of throwing the baby out with the bathwater. So, I think there's some sort of middle ground. There is a role for cars, and I dare say, in a coronavirus environment, private vehicle ownership is suddenly looking very attractive. Are industry players and road regulators, do you think, are now, are now aligned in their vision of uh, the future of mobility? Well, I think the regulators are coming to terms with all of these new options. Where does car sharing fit in? Where does ride hailing fit in? Where does micro mobility scooters fit in? And oh, by the way, we have all this mass transit that really is quite wonderful actually. And you know what? Those taxi drivers were actually doing a pretty good job before we let all the ride hailing guys in and almost destroy their business. So I expect a rediscovery of public transportation. In fact, I'm seeing this happen. I expect a sort of an insurgency from the taxi industry with the help of some technology companies. And I expect that regulators will start to piece together what their expectations are for scooters. Do we want them? Do we not? We've seen them welcomed and then shunned and banned and kicked out. Uh, uh, so we're still exploring how to use that technology, geofence it, maybe help it fit in. Uh, car sharing after decades of being available, so it's really not that new a phenomenon, there's still only about 400,000 shared cars on the planet. In the reality, almost every car could be, should be shareable or shared, so there's something missing in that equation, and I think there's a regulatory piece that, that could be helpful. Thinking of recent industry or public sector announcements in the intelligent transport arena, do any interesting must-watch projects come to mind? The European Data Task Force, I think, it, uh, creates some intriguing opportunities and possibilities of joining up infrastructure data with vehicle data to create a safer driving environment, maybe a more efficient and cleaner uh, driving environment. Uh, there are also, I, I wouldn't call it per se an initiative, but uh, I would be a little bit remiss if I didn't mention the rather serious drive, particularly again in Europe, towards uh, essentially doing away with the internal combustion engine uh, by 2035 or 2040. Uh, that's a, that's a, a pretty serious uh, mandate and, and movement in the market, and actually it, it meshes very nicely with the car sharing and ride hailing uh, markets, and uh, I expect that taxis, rental cars, all of these kind of fleets that are out there are going to shift very aggressively towards EVs. So maybe people can't afford EVs, they may be put off a little bit by the price, but fleets, they make perfect sense, and so there will be a significant transformation and electrification of vehicle fleets. And do you think that's an achievable ambition? 
I think so. I, I think it's going to ramp up the adoption rate much more rapidly than trying to sell and rely solely on selling EVs to consumers directly. And finally, what's the value of this symposium to you and the wider intelligent transport community? This is where I come to better understand how the standard setting bodies ac across Europe and across the world are trying to come to grips with this car connectivity proposition, securing cars, uh, electrifying cars, monetizing uh, or, or understanding the data that's coming out of cars, and, and optimizing these in-vehicle experiences, both for making them uh, enjoyable and, and continuing to have that opportunity, but also making them safe and clean. Well, thank you very much for joining us here in the studio today, and uh, we look forward to catching up with you again at some, some stage in the, in the very near future. Thank you. Glad to be here. Thank you.